thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, to this uh, virtual meeting of, of Heritage Oak Film. Um, it's, uh, it, it'll be nice when we can get back together again, but it's at least nice to see everybody's faces on the screen this morning. And our thanks go to the technical support people who help us to put all this together. Um, the staff work behind the scenes and they'll manage the delegations. Uh, they're coming in and they're coming and they're going out. And uh, there are three registered delegations today, and I would remind them that they have 10 minutes uh, each to speak. Uh, then they may be asked questions. Um, if anyone is watching the meeting who would like to delegate, then they can do so by calling 905-815-6095 and arrangements will be made. And any member of the public who's watching who would like to have access to the agenda materials if they don't already have it, can go on to oakville.ca and, uh, and, and get the materials there. Um, we have three discussion items uh, on the agenda today. And if at any time you lose connection, um, then you can uh, either phone in that number, 905-815-6095, or email townclerk at oakville.ca. And remind everybody that we are an advisory committee and that what we, what advice we generate today will go to the Planning Development Council at its meeting on Monday, the 5th of July at 6.30. And anyone who wants to delegate at that meeting is reminded that the process, the route to do that is through the clerk. So the person to write through is not a member of the committee. You write to the clerk or you call the clerk at the number I've given you and, uh, and arrange for that. Um, we'd start with regrets, and that just reminds me, I thought we'd maybe take a moment to remember the, the passing of a dear friend and colleague and former member of this committee, Terry Smith. Not all of you will have known Terry, but I'm sure many of you will, either through work on the committee or through the many activities that Terry was involved in, in, in the community. Um, it's only 63. I mean, I just I find that astonishing. I mean, I look at people who are 63 and I think they're just kids, but I, mean, I just can't, can't believe that. And, uh, you know, our, our thoughts and prayers go to Francine and, and, and the children and um, we'll miss him. And I think uh, he did a lot to get this committee um, started and going in the right direction way back. And in the real estate community, he'd be missed too because Terry understood heritage and he understood the impact that it could have in real estate and he was able to appropriately counsel pros prospective buyers. So I, I think it's, it's, it's appropriate that we should just remember Terry for a minute. Okay, we have um, regrets, I think, from Daniela. Have you any other regrets, uh, Madam Secretary? Madam Chair, Carrie Colburn needs to leave the meeting just before 10. Sorry, Mr. Yep. Chairman. Yep. yep. And we'll hope that Bob finds his way through. I had difficulties getting on this morning. I, the, the connection that I had through the calendar didn't work. Um, but anyway, so we have regrets already from Daniela. Maybe Bob will turn up. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest with respect to any of the items on the agenda today? Okay, seeing none, move on to confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. That's our meeting of May the 18th. These were distributed. Are there any comments? Councillor Duddock, are you moving that the minutes be adopted as circulated? Thank you. So the motion is the minutes be approved as circulated. Anyone opposed to that? Seeing none, the motion is carried. See, I didn't really have to explain to you the process anymore uh, by which we do votes. We've got it all off pat. So the first discussion item on the agenda is item 4.1. And this is um, uh, a revisit of the heritage permit application with respect to 176 Front Street. And it's Carolyn who's going to lead us through that. So Carolyn, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Just wait for the slideshow to pop up here. So again, uh, you're familiar with the property. It's 176 Front Street. We can go to the next slide. Just a reminder, it's at the corner of Thomas Street and Front Street along the lakeshore and is designated as part of the old Oakville Heritage Conservation District. So the property contains the 1837 James McDonald House as well as a few uh, additions that were added over the years. 
So the current application is essentially the same as what you saw before in terms of the programming and the general uh, overview, uh, and that's to restore the historic home, demolish three non-historic wings, construct four new wings, and add a second driveway. In terms of the process, the application uh, or proposal has received conditional site plan approval. Uh, it has also received minor variance approval for a couple minor variances. And currently we're looking now at the heritage permit process, which is why this is coming back to you to the heritage committee. Next. So I won't get into all these details because this slide is the same as what you saw um, last month. Uh, again, so the proposal is to restore the historic house, demolish the three non-historic wings, and to construct four new wings, most of which are on the same footprint uh, as the existing wings. Next. And the minor variances that were approved, uh, the first was to permit two attached garages. The second was for a garage setback uh, that didn't quite meet the requirement. And the third is for front yard setbacks for the Westerly garage and the Easterly garage um, that also don't meet the setbacks. Portion of that is existing conditions because the house is located so close to the street. Next. So at the May 2021 um, uh, Heritage Oakville meeting last month, the recommendation from the, the Heritage Committee and the Council approved resolution was the following, uh, that the application be deferred. Um, and the second one is that the application, that the revised application take into account the concerns expressed and issues raised at this meeting, including cladding, fascia setback on the east side of the property, and elements of the garage to the west in terms of how of should it be there and how to soften it. So uh, these were the three concerns that were raised by the committee and, and expressed in the resolution. Uh, so these are the three that the applicant worked to to revise. And so you can see these three revision or three revisions um, made to this application to address this resolution. The first is that the stone cladding has been changed to brick cladding. And secondly, the um, spandrel panel, so the, the fascia above the covered entrance has been set back by one foot to uh, clearly delineate between the garage portion of that, that wing and the covered entrance. And thirdly, the previously proposed concrete driveways have been uh, changed to permeable brick pavers. Next. So I'll just take you around um, the house again. This is the front, next. And these are, this is for the, for the uh, the location of the proposed westerly garage next coming around to the west next this is the rear so again you can see the the um, 1980s additions in the back there next and uh, coming back to the southeast so on the right hand side of the two um, garages that are proposed to be replaced next and just another view there next and this is just the view coming along um, Front Street from the east, uh, the stone wall with the picket fence. This is proposed to be re retained as is. Next. And coming back to the front. Next. So the site plan you have here, um, it's also in your agenda, all these drawings. Um, you can see the changes that are being proposed to the materials for the driveways. And again, changes to um, the setback of the covered entryway. Next. Uh, these drawings, again, the changes here with the covered entrance and as well as the material change from stone to brick. Next. This is the west elevation. Next. And the south towards the lake. Next. And coming around to the east uh, where the east garage is proposed. Next. I've got floor plans here. These are just for um, discussion purposes if required. Uh, next, this is the second floor. Uh, you can see in the shaded areas of the first floor portions, the green roof that's proposed. Next. And this is just the roof plan. Next. Uh, as well, the landscaping remains the same as what you saw in the last meeting. So these are the proposed uh, white picket fence. The existing one is to be um, rebuilt within the property line because it's outside the property line and we have a new gate and new uh, metal fencing going down towards the lake and again through the site plan process um, there was approval for the two trees on the westerly portion of the property to be removed uh, but th 13 new trees are being planted which brings the canopy coverage of the property uh, to 51 percent uh, whereas 20 percent is required next 
And this is just showing the landscape plan uh, with, the, with the existing and proposed trees. Next. Um, just bringing back to the front elevation, I thought this was helpful to maybe just show and compare. This is the existing that you see today. Next. This was the first proposal that you saw for the site plan process. So that was with the stone uh, before any changes were made to um, some of the, the details of that design. Uh, you can see on the right hand side, there's also the west of the garage is just not visible uh, from this view because it's, it's farther it's set farther back from the front plane of the house. Next. This was the second proposal. So still um, in stone proposing lake stone cladding. Um, then changes were made to make the covered entrance uh, a little bit more easily distinguishable from the garage. So additional plantings were added, a tree was added here, and the driveway was narrowed just to be a single driveway. Um, and in the location of the rest of the current driveway is proposed to be the, again, the tree, landscaping, and um, a pathway to enter into the covered entrance. Next. And this is the third proposal so that you have before you today. So you can see the cladding has been changed to, um, to, to brick and there has been a setback of the covered entrance. A couple of other things I'd point out to um, is the addition of the green roof since you first saw the application, as well as a, um, a, a light vent sort of in the, in the covered entryway. So it would actually be open above in terms of, um, of light access for that covered entrance. So just again, really distinguishing the garage uh, from the front entrance way, which will have light entering it. Um, it will be set back as well. Next. And this is the rest of the renderings uh, for the current proposal you have before you today. So again, you can see the cladding has been changed to brick. Um, brick pavers are proposed for the, um, for the driveways. Next. The view from the park. Next. The view from the rear, from the southwest, next. From the rear, next. Again, from the rear, from the southeast, next. And this is a view coming along uh, Front Street from the east, next. Um, and this is the, currently what's proposed for uh, the cladding is a, a handmade tumbled brick in a lighter color to um, just ensure that the, the new cladding has a, a lighter, um, softer appearance than um, the stone, which would have been a little bit darker. Uh, so this is the actual samples. Uh, it's obviously, normally uh, when we were meeting, we would have been able to look at these materials in real life, but I've just tried to show you the best we can through this image. Next. Uh, again, just going to the standards and guidelines um, that we use to um, evaluate these types of applications. In addition to the district plan, of course, um, the first, you know, recognizing that each historic place is a physical record of its time, place, and use. Um, so, from this respect, we do um, we do support more contemporary designs uh, as long as they are compatible with the existing heritage house. Uh, secondly, conserve the heritage value and character defining elements. Again, in this case, the heritage portion, the historic portion of the house, is to be restored. And all those elements, uh, such as the windows and shutters and stucco being restored, <clears throat> any new windows or elements on the heritage house, you can see are made to match the um, existing style of the wood windows, for example, on uh, the east elevation. And to make the new work physically, visually, and visually compatible with, subordinate to, and distinguishable from the historic place. So in our staff opinion, the proposed additions are compatible with the, with the existing house. They are subordinate to, they are much lower. Um, the one is actually down into the grounds so on, the, on the easterly side, so quite a bit lower than the existing house, which is quite large. Um, and distinguishable from, we've got you know, a large white house, and they're using a different material. Uh, cladding or brick cladding, which is common within the Heritage District. And finally, that any new additions or new construction um, are created so that the essential form and integrity of historic place will not be impaired if the new work is removed in the future. Uh, so as you can see in this case, this house, additions have been added to the house over the years. And this is a case where, um, you know, they're able to remove those additions without having a significant negative impact on the heritage house. So that is the case uh, with the proposed additions being essentially the same footprint as the existing um, additions. So that in 20 years, if someone wanted to remove them um, and go through the process again, they could, and the heritage house would still remain. 
Next. I won't go through all of these. This is um, what you saw in my presentation last time, and it's in your report. These are the um, architectural guidelines from the Heritage Conservation District Plan. Um, so again, talking about uh, you know, preserving and, and, and restoring the heritage elements that exist, uh, ensuring that um, the, new, the new additions have a design style, materials, and color um, that are considered on an individual basis and are, are compatible with the existing heritage house and making sure that the construction is you know, visually sympathetic to the existing streetscape and the surrounding properties. Next. These are the um, guidelines on landscaping. Um, there were no, I don't think, any concerns last time with the fences and walls. Again, they are looking at uh, rebuilding the wood picket fence, um, and I don't think anyone had any concerns with that proposal. Next. So I have the staff recommendation here. Um, this is a little bit different from the last one. So uh, the staff recommendation is that the application be approved subject to the following, and that's that final details on new windows, doors, and cladding be submitted to heritage planning staff for final approval. Um, and of course, that the application expired two years from final approval by council. And um, again, we're looking for the cladding. We wanna make sure we've got the exact examples uh, of the brick that's being proposed as well as details on the windows and doors. And that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Super, thank you, Carolyn. Um, the, the, the paving for the two driveways, um, is that the, um, the, the green paving, or the permeable paving? It's uh, shown as, as brick permeable pavers, um, and perhaps the uh, applicant can give a little bit more details on that. Um, but as far as I know, it's the idea, there won't be a significant amount of, of grass within there. Um, yeah. But um, I hopefully maybe uh, Mr. Martino could answer that question a bit better. Good, because when we get to it, um, I might want to suggest that we add the paving to the list of items that staff will have the final look-see on. I know the town has an initiative for the, the sort of permeable green paving, and uh, I think it would be nice if this building was one of the first examples of that. Um, so, okay, and then you mentioned the, the trees in your um, in, in your summary of, of the different elements that, that we've, we've been through, and I know we expressed some concern about that, but the tree issue was dealt with through the site planning process, the Conservation Authority, the Town Arborist, the Protection Bylaw, the Provincial Interest in Trees, so the tree is, is not really an, it's not an issue for us. We have no we have no reach into the into the matter of the trees at this stage. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, this district plan doesn't really speak to um, trees, especially on private properties. Even the landscaping um, guidelines that are, are there, which are very minimal, are really just related to streetscapes of the public right of way of the town. Um, so at this point, we rely on the site plan process to review that, uh, which has been done as you as you stated. Okay, good. Super. Right. Questions of Carla. Kathy? Thank you. Three, Mr. Chair. Um, Carolyn, uh, given that the existing uh, wings are currently wood cladding, um, was that ever raised as a possibility for these additions to have it uh, duplicate what's already there? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Dudek, it certainly was. We did discuss uh, the options of, of wood um, early on. Obviously, wood siding um, and wood shingles are uh, you know, commonly used for new additions. We don't require um, applicants to keep the existing cladding of the existing wings, uh, but it was discussed. There, there were concerns that that could actually um, lead to the, the, the additions being a little uh, too modern. This is from the applicant's perspective, um, depending on the types of use of wood. Uh, again, so I could probably defer that to the applicant in terms of why they, they kept choosing to use a masonry product. But there were certainly discussions with staff saying that that would be um, supported, you know, in terms of material, if, if that's where they wanted to go. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of Carolyn? George? There we go, finally. Go, George. Yeah. Probably with the cursor, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to uh, to Carolyn. Uh, there are three items that are listed in our in our uh, agenda that were to be dealt with uh, 
following the deferral. The third being elements of the West Garage in terms of should it be there or how to soften it. So far, maybe we'll hear something from uh, Mr. Martino, but uh, can, can Carolyn tell us or tell me whether there were discussions about should it be there or how to soften it, because it was a key element that was raised at the last meeting, not only by uh, members, but by, uh, by the uh, delegations and the delegates who spoke. Sure. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, to George. Um, so there were discussions um, in terms of removing it completely, the applicants weren't um, ready to go to that route because that was a pretty significant part of this application for them was to be able to get a space with parking uh, that was completely within the private property. As you know, the existing um, garage is not far set back far enough from the street to permit legal uh, you know, parking in that spot. And so because that um, addition and that footprint in the new driveway was approved through, was approved through the site plan process and through the Committee of Adjustment process, um, they felt that they would continue with that because it already had received approvals from the town. In terms of softening, um, that was their their attempt at that was to to change the um, materials of the driveway. It was a concrete, which, which would have been a more of a stark, lighter look. So this is their proposal now: is the um, materials of the driveway being changed to permeable pavers? And as the the chair noted, that could be something that is included in the. Uh, recommendation for for final um, details to come back and perhaps uh, there are some specific options that the committee could request uh, the applicants to look at and perhaps the applicant has more details on that today as well yeah. thank you is that all right? Right? could I have a follow-up just for that oh, absolutely uh, just and this is something that Carolyn may not be able to answer but my recollection is and not my recollection my memory is that Years ago, town staff, town pining had a policy, and maybe it was only related to the Heritage Conservation District, but I know that uh, I was either still on LACAC originally or, or uh, with Chris Bailey and the Lakeside Residents Association um, uh, looking inventories about uh, splitting lots and, and zoning. And an application came up by an, a resident on King Street to require or to request another driveway or access point onto King Street from the property. And the town staff policy they were told, we were told, and the owner was told, was that one access point only onto a street. Now, I don't know whether that policy is still in effect. I guess if it's not, then why not? But it leads me to the <laughs> second part of my second question is that, did anyone take a look at if a second driveway is put on that street, you've got three houses on the north side of Front Street with three driveways. The fourth house has a driveway onto King Street. Two houses in the south have three street, have two driveways. You're now going to have a third if this application proceeds. And within a space of three houses on, on the north side, two in the south, so really between the three houses, you have six driveways opening onto a lane, which is almost akin to a a country lane with a, with a number of number of people walking there night night and day, and it seems like it's a very dangerous precedent. And I I'm just so I I put a two a two point question to Caroline. I'm sorry, Caroline, you may not be able to answer the first part, but I wonder if anyone looked at the second because the second is really really important. Thank no, that through you, Mr. Chair. That so that would have been assessed um, to the site plan process. Um, I know that in terms of staff looking at, you've got planning staff, you've got development engineering staff, engineering and construction staff because they also deal with driveway permit cuts. Um, and uh, so I know that they would have looked at it, and I think you know, generally speaking, we like to see one driveway. I know there are circumstances along Trafalgar Road where two are permitted in terms of two entrances with a um, a circular driveway. Um, and I think in this case, because it was a unique circumstance, certainly it's not permitted on the average property, but because of this one being so close to the lake and then not being able to go further back towards the lake because of the conservation authority restrictions. Um, and the town had a preference to be able to have a driveway um, with that would actually uh, permit parking of a car fully on the, on the driveway, that that's why it was a second one was permitted on the west. Uh, I can't speak to it really more than that, but it definitely certainly was looked at from all angles um, through that process. Thank you. Okay, George. Thank you. Okay. 
and um, I'm glad to see that Bob has joined us. Nice to see you, Bob. Right. I think we all had a few technical difficulties signing on this morning. So yes, definitely. Don't, don't, don't feel badly. <laughs> I have. Okay. Have you got a question of Callum? Okay, Bob. Y yes. Um, my thought is, is more of, of uh, let me call it, uh, extreme caution, if you will, because pro this property, not necessarily because it's such an imposing structure, but by, by destination, if you will, this property and some of these properties on Front Street, in many ways, define the district. And, and, and so in both from a street view and you could say also from a lake view point of view. And, and when, when they have elements that are incorporated into them going forward, that really, if you will, uh, maybe go against some of the traditional or ultimate or, or, or real traditional aspects uh, and and they're all out there, uh, if you will, just making a statement as to where heritage is going. I find a property like this, uh, um, you know, I see an awful lot of these properties down in places like Savannah and, and Charleston and whatnot, where it's so strict that 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 the property has to replicate and fall in with exactly what the heritage district looks like, because this one with, with, with where it sits, if you will, as George said, on a lane with a really a, a lot of traffic on it, it, it makes a statement saying, and this is really what heritage is all about, and they've done a wonderful job on it. So I would just like to, if you will, voice extreme caution that we make sure that some of these properties that are right out there in plain view of everybody, make a statement that heritage is very important to us. That was a good statement for later, um, Bob, and we'll remember it. Um, if you had a question for Carolyn right now, that would be good. I didn't want to interrupt you. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> okay, so you don't have a question specifically to go on to that? Not, not specifically. Okay, that. that's fine. That's good, Bob. Councillor uh, uh, Gittings. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I will also be uh, mentioning something. There we go. Am I back? There we go. Uh, be mentioning something similar to Bob. Uh, through you, Carolyn, you talked uh, at the first meeting. We sent this back to the uh, to the proponent as a result of the concern over the lake stone. And so they've come back with uh, a brick cladding. Looking at the pictures of it, obviously a, a, you know, a pretty accurate representation of what it's going to look like. Uh, my question is regarding um, whether it's sympathetic. You know, you read through the original plan from 40 years ago, and you look at the uh, Ontario Act and, and the other uh, pieces of information that guide us. Any discussions on whether uh, that is the best coloring, whether any uh, talk about uh, having a white finish or stain or paint over it or something along those lines so that fits in better? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, to Council Giddings, we've had quite a few um, discussions just recently, obviously, um, since the cladding has changed from stone to brick. Uh, there are quite there are a number of different brick colors in the district just throughout the different eras of homes. Uh, there are some more sort of yellow brown ones. Obviously the district is primarily more stucco and wood, so there aren't a huge amount of examples. Um, but I do know talking to the applicants that they are amenable to looking at different options for the brick, whether that's, you know, a different color, um, um, you know, maybe like, as you said, painting uh, or having a look that's as a painted brick to sort of more uh, match the existing house color. So I think those are certainly options that we can look at. Um, and again, I'll let the applicant speak to that to more detail when it comes to him. Um, but that's certainly something that could be discussed and even put into the recommendation uh, if, if that's something that the applicant would be supportive of, which I, I believe they would be. Thank you. Okay, Dave. 
Okay, good. Now, Madam Clark, I think Kerry may have left. It is now 10 o'clock, and I know she had to go and take her dad to a hospital visit. So if that's the case, um, we will assume that Kerry has left. We might take her picture down. It's, it's so depressing to see all that lovely sunshine and, and, and beach. Okay, any other questions of uh, Carolyn? Okay, so then Terry, it would be over to you if you want to talk to us. You just unmute and off you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning, members of the committee. Um, and thank you, Carolyn, for the presentation. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Great, thank you. Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to address um, is a very quick answer with respect to the color of the brick uh, that we're proposing this for the committee today. Uh, we are amenable to work with staff, uh, perhaps if the feeling is to lighten it up uh, to uh, more of a whitish color uh, to blend in with white stucco foam. Uh, we have been working with staff throughout the process and uh, that's something that we would continue to do. Um, I think in hearing a number of the questions from the committee, uh, I think it's appropriate to talk, if I could, just briefly about the process that we've gone through, because a lot of these questions have to do with the process. Uh, my clients and I have participated in the planning process for about 18 months. We attended a pre-consultation meeting and were directed to, uh, from staff as to the process, that is to say, site plan, uh, application, uh, heritage uh, committee application, as well as uh, attending the committee of adjustment for the variance. So we've made several submissions to the site plan revisions according to the planning comments and desires of the various departments. Planning staff are in support of the application and provided these comments through the number of uh, different processes that we've uh, been through. We attended the committee of adjustment May 4th and received the minor variances to permit the additions uh, as presented, that is to say where they're located. Uh, this was done with full planning staff report, including the heritage review and the comments noted in the report to the committee. And it says that the variances were supported. Uh, the town took our application, oh, excuse me, the committee of adjustment decision is now final and it has not been appealed. The town took our application as an opportunity uh, to close the Thomas Street uh, road allowance south of Front Street, uh, which impacted my client's property by changing the frontage and the zoning regulations in Front Street. Uh, the town asked that my client, through a deeming bylaw, merge the two laws into one, uh, and that has been completed, and so therefore we removed the second law from registered plan number one, uh, and that was done. The owner and I met with heritage staff over 14 months ago at the beginning of this pandemic uh, uh, to talk about the proposal and receive feedback. We've now been to, uh, this would be the third virtual heritage meeting, and we have attempted to respond to any of the committee's comments and feedback each time in keeping with the heritage district plan, principles of heritage traditions uh, and alterations, and the integrity of the proposal. Continue, as I mentioned at the top of my presentation, to be amenable to work with staff and the details to bring about the best proposal. Through the process, we've heard submissions in opposition to the proposal regarding trees, traffic, pedestrian safety, variances to the zoning bylaw. Respectfully, these matters have been addressed through the site plan, development engineering, and committee of adjustment in an appropriate fashion. And for lack of better term, consider them to be settled law. Um, heritage planning staff have reviewed the proposal and they've demonstrated how not only does it meet the heritage district plan, which was written 39, 40 years ago, uh, as well as uh, the Canadian standard uh, for heritage preservation of historic places. Uh, I guess finally, <clears throat> they've recommended approval of the application today. I guess finally, unlike the committee of adjustment process, where as a matter of process, we engage abutting residents for their support of the application because of the impacts to their property. Uh, that is to say, we're reducing setbacks or uh, 
issues that could arise between neighbors. At the request of our clients, we've chosen not to enter into a quote unquote letter writing contest, which we feel would further divide. I don't believe that the process is one about popularity, but rather that the proposal meets the guidelines of the district plan, a sound heritage plan. I'm confident from my discussions through the committee adjustment process where we did canvass uh, the residents in the district, the letters that we have received from the impacted residents and the Rate Bridge Association is that there's broad support for our support. Um, I guess I would be happy to answer any other questions. Um, and I do have a couple of slides for a presentation. Perhaps um, I, I should attend to that. With respect to the garage, because a member had brought it up and its location, is it possible to put the slides uh, that I had attached to my presentation up? Jill, can you do that? Or Yeah, good, thank you. This is on George Street, right around the corner. The single car garage has a very similar kind of entrance into uh, a covered porch. Um, next slide, please. It's a budding residence to the uh, subject property of our proposal along Front Street, single car garage, and then flat roof. Next, please. I believe everybody knows this building, it's the Warren Doorstep, single car garage, Front Street. Might add that this particular slide that there are two entrances uh, that one is to the garage, which is on the east side of the property. There's also a parking pad where all of the people park on the uh, west side of the building. Next slide, please. This was one recently done on King Street, where it's a prominent garage at the end of the driveway, and it also has a flat roof. Um, with respect to, I guess, the question of the member uh, about the entrances, the zoning bylaw permits properties greater than 18 meters in frontage, which our property has uh, well in excess of. Uh, it provides the zoning bylaw to have uh, two driveway entrances. And that would conclude my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the members may have. Thank you, Terry. Um, right, any questions of uh, the architect? Yeah, Kathy? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I won't get into uh, debating the processes and the fact that we're dealing here with heritage, not community adjustment, not zoning. Um, I'll go further into that when uh, comes the time for comments. Um, the fact um, or the concern I raised regarding the cladding, they never looked at using wood versus the brick. Would they consider going for the wood? Thank you. Thank you, member, and for you, Mr. Chair. Um, there were a number of different cladings uh, discussed uh, and looked at, and uh, my clients still feel that the brick uh, is an appropriate and mentioned uh, cladding uh, within the district guidelines, and they believe they can, you know, bring forth uh, something that is quite nice and uh, compatible. Uh, in the brick, perhaps a softer color uh, with the existing stucco. Uh, so the, con the concern about siding is that the siding that we would uh, perhaps look at would probably end up looking, in, at least in our opinion, uh, too modern. Um, I think you know there's other. Well, I believe there's other examples, and I'm uh, and uh, the one that we've had discussion with staff about is uh, the unfortunate siding that was put on the Lind house at the bottom of the fogger. And because it's wood siding, it was accepted. And, you know, quite frankly and honestly, that was my favorite house in all of Oakville. And I believe that through the use of wood siding, they've taken all the character and charm away from that house. So we did look at it, uh, uh, Councillor, um, and we sort of feel strongly that this is a better solution. I, I'm sorry, I just cannot grasp the fact that wood siding is seen as modern. Uh, that, you know, that just blows me away. So thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions of, of Terry? George? There we go. Fine. I'm having trouble again with the cursor. Sorry, Jerry. Um, uh, to, through you to Terry. Terry, uh, you're, you're familiar with the guidelines and the procedures of the plan, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And you've you've probably had an opportunity to read the uh, a number of the de letters from delegations that were sent out uh, on this matter and their description of the uh, of the guidelines. And uh, let me try to one of them, in fact, and it says construction materials should be visually sympathetic with existing buildings. OK, there are no existing buildings within that block or within the two blocks that have brick. So then it says and the streetscape, existing buildings and the streetscape, which is a quite unique area of that of that land on that laneway. And then appropriate and yet appropriate given the design of the new structure. And I don't see how you can justify complying with that guideline. So maybe you could elaborate and show me where I'm wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Member. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess the, the, the thing that I would say is, is that we could stand at a point out in front of this property, 176, and I could see the Air Force Estate. I could see uh, St. Hugh Church, and I could see a number of other residences which do have. Um, so I believe that the test is sort of what's mentioned in the district, not necessarily the uh, immediate adjacent neighbors. Uh, the district plan specifically references brick as a compatible, at least suitable use for cladding material um, within the district. Um, and, and so in that way, I believe it conforms to the district plan. I, I, I accept that others may not think that way or would like to see it clad in something else. Um, but I guess planning staff have in great detail uh, gone through the proposal, heritage planning staff, and have demonstrated and written uh, how it does not work. And I guess I would concur with their conclusion. Uh, just to follow up, Mr. Church. Sure. Just the plan is set up, and everybody seems to recognize that, and I recognize that because I was there when it was done. The plan was set up on a block by block basis. And the comments are related to block by block by block, not Kirkless, not up St. Jude's or some other church or some other area in the district. This is the area, this is the block, and it's completely unsympathetic, it seems to me. So how do you convince me that I'm wrong? There's no stone, uh, there's no brick at all. Through you, Mr. Chair, I, I think my comments would be the same as that, you know, the eastern terminus of Front Street is the airport. And and that's a block. That is a block. There's no street. Not the block interrupt. in the plan. No. Oh, sorry. Look at the yeah. plan. Uh, I guess I believe that it's a sympathetic material in that it's listed in the district plan. Uh, we brought it, uh, you know, more in conformity or at least closer in color to the existing house mentioned in the district plan. And um, I think by that standard, it meets the test of compatibility. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Hey, George, thank you. Any other questions of Terry? Yes, Brenda. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And through you, Mr. Chair, I believe this is a question to Caroline. Caroline, uh, for the house, I believe the correct number is 181 Front Street. That uh, is, it was a 197, it's a home that's the one where the entrance will be down the side of the drive. 187 Front Street. 187. Thank you very much. What is the? I believe the cladding on that house is going to be brick. Is it not? Uh, no, three, Mr. Chair. I believe that's pro, uh, siding is proposed. It's siding. Okay. Thank you. That was my question. Thank you. And Brenda, I noticed you did have your hand up, but behind you there's a light-colored door or something, and I couldn't see the yellow hand against that. So oh. I'm, I'm glad you finally waved. Um, right, thank you. Yes, Russ, it's your go. 
Uh, it seems to me the question of brick. Um, if you look to the east or the west of uh, this building, I mean, Urchless is uh, the next most dominant building and it's all red brick. Um, Terry, was there any thought of uh, using red brick as a compliment? Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the discussion of red brick was uh, with staff um, pretty quickly uh, dismissed in that the contrast uh, between the existing white structure would be too great. And um, so we were actually, as in other projects that we've done, sort of told, uh, propose something that was not red brick, frankly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going back to my experience as well. I mean, we've worked with staff, uh, you know, I can talk about it all the road where we've been told, uh, you know, that we should clad a uh, building in a board and batten and separate it from the brick house. It was an existing brick historic structure, but we were to use a color that wouldn't be close to the brick color. Uh, so as to differentiate, and I believe that Carolyn, um, you know, sort of brought it up with the guidelines for places in Canada that it shall be differentiated for. So it was discussed, it was dismissed that uh, the brick should be a uh, slightly more subtle color in order not to uh, detract from the existing uh, heritage structure. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and to be fair, while we're all dredging our memories, the Stanfield House, which is on Navy Street, is also brick, and, and it's, it's actually closer. Any other questions of Terry? Right, okay. We have, I think, um, one delegation, uh, Madam Secretary, that's uh, Jane Hockrig. So if you can uh, work the necessary magic and bring Jane on. Mr. Chair, while we're waiting, could I maybe ask both Bob and Terry to mute while the other's going on? I seem to have uh, some background noise every now and then. Okay, okay. Bob, you're muted now. Yep, you're fine. Okay, Jen, you're... Yeah, can you yeah. hear us? You can, okay? So can the... Secretary will be keeping her clock going. You've got 10 minutes and we look forward to your delegation. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman um, Bucknell uh, and members of the Heritage Oakville Committee. My name is Jane Hockrig. Um, I'm disappointed to be here again today on this application as our sincere hope had been that the discussion by this committee in May would have resulted in revisions that would be more consistent with your clear direction, particularly as it relates to the material aesthetics. I'm choosing to read our submission to you as I think it's important to be on the public record. Um, from our previous submission on this file in May, you know that my husband Jamie McRae and I live in the old Oakville Heritage District at 65 Navy Street. We moved here in 1977 and undertook a significant renovation of our home built in 1831. We've been active members of our community for 20 plus years. We have both had leadership roles with the Oakville Lakeside Residents Association in the past. It's perhaps ironic, but in our view, timely and appropriate that 21 Thomas Street is also on the agenda for today. A meeting today where you as stewards of the town's heritage district plan and guidelines are responsible for making an especially important recommendation on the application for change at 176 Front Street. As all of you know, 21 Thomas Street is across the street from the historic James McDonald House at 176. 21 Thomas Street is an infill development that was built in the late 1990s. In January 2018, an application was made to construct a new one-story addition and a small rear yard deck to this non-historic house. Despite the staff position, Heritage Oakville recommended that the application be denied. In discussion at that time regarding their rationale for the denial, at which I was at attendance, Heritage Oakville expressed concerns that the box-like design, the proposed materials and color 
had the potential to accentuate the addition even further, making it a more visible focal point. In addition, the proposed addition was not seen as complementary to or sympathetic with the character of the area and too distinctive and modern as an interpretation of what the old Oakville Heritage District Plan and guidelines envisioned for change in the area. Faced with a denial recommendation from Heritage Oakville, the applicant made changes and came forward with a design more complementary to the existing street character and sympathetic and complementary to the design, texture, and other visual qualities of this non-historic house. Fast forward three years and once again, Heritage Oakville is being asked to consider an application for change right across the street from 21 Thomas Street. In this case, it's an historic house built in 1837 by Carpenter James McDonald. In addition to being important on its own merits as an example of the characteristic plan and profile of Georgian houses of the late 18th and 19th centuries, this historic home's proximity to the well-traveled pedestrian front street and its location at the juncture of the three key blocks within the district plan means considerable care is required in ensuring any changes and to ensure that they are sympathetic and complementary to this special heritage property and the existing street character. In our view, the revisions that are before you today are not complementary as an alteration to this historic house and are not sympathetic to the existing streetscape character as envisioned by the old Oakville Heritage District Plan for which this home and property are an integral part. Despite the consistent direction and guidance from this committee that has been provided to the applicant by the committee, not staff, both in December 2020 and in May 2021, in our view, the alterations do not reflect the material aesthetics and suggestions that have been made. As each of you know, as volunteers on this committee, personal views on proposed changes are not relevant. What is relevant is whether proposed changes are consistent with the intention and guidelines of the old Oakville Heritage District Plan, not other plans. From our detailed analysis of the revised application, which is in, attached to our submission that I hope that you've read, we do not feel that the application meets this test. An iconic historical home that is at the heart of the old Oakville Heritage District is not the place where an architectural statement should be made, particularly when the district plan uh, which has been placed for 40 years, does not envision such a modern interpretation. It's the place where extra care and due diligence is required to ensure that changes are complementary and sympathetic, not only to the house, but, to, um, due, but due to its district designation, the streetscape and surrounding area. We sincerely appreciate the challenge that this application presents to this committee. However, as with the courage that you demonstrated and the stand you took with 21 Thomas, a non-historic house just across the street, we urge you to recommend to Council that the application as it stands today, the 176 Front Street and historic house be denied. 176 Front Street holds a very special place within the district and within the hearts of many Oakville residents, not just the local neighborhood. We think it deserves better than this. Thank you for your attention to our submission, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, you just took just over five minutes, <laughs> but um, that, you, you certainly expressed yourself very clearly and very well. So thank you for that. Um, are there any questions of Jane at this point? Councillor Gittings. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you, Jane, for your comments. Uh, having discussed this with you, and is part of your concern the process in terms of the, as uh, the chair mentioned earlier, the Committee of Adjustment and Conservation Halton uh, restrictions in terms of what could be done on a, on a rather challenging lot? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I'm, I'm completely accepting of the process that the town has set up for reviewing changes um, within the district. Uh, it's, it's always been clear that there are site plan 
um, issue, issues that have to be cons uh, considered, Committee of Adjustment and Heritage. You know, we've, we've often toyed around whether the, the Heritage go first, Committee of Adjustment second, you know, regardless. Um, you know, in my mind, um, the, the, all of us who live here, including the applicant, would know what this process is. It always takes longer than you want it to. <laughs> That's certainly been our experience. But, you know, to get things right, it's worth the investment. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we knew when we bought our property, there were restrictions. I'm sure when the applicant bought that property, they were well aware of the conservation challenges that were associated with it. And, and as a result, the limitations on perhaps whether can you build your ideal dream house or do you, do you have to compromise? Thank you for that. The three items that were sent back uh, to the proponent was the, as, as you know, the cladding material, the setback, uh, fascia setback and the elements of the garage. Is the fascia setback and the elements of the garage in terms of the permeable paving uh, to soften that, uh, are those, have, have we hit the mark on that with just the cladding material remaining? On the fascia setback, I understand what's been done there, and I think that with, that was with the objective of trying to break up that the sort of the length of the the perception of the wall on the east side, and and I thought that was an appropriate uh, response and actually a, a very appropriate direction by this committee. On the on the west side of the garage, um, I'm I'm not that pleased that there's going to be a garage on that side, but we we made an application of our concerns with committee of adjustment that happened. My concern is, is and, and I, I know um, Carolyn's response about, we're, you know, the importance of understanding what is these, this permeable surface like. Um, I don't think any of you have the evidence yet of what that is going to look like, et cetera. And so I would be thinking that that's quite critical for that to happen. I think the big point was um, relative to the material aesthetics. Um, if I think back to uh, the May 2021 comments, um, there was a lot of commentary and direction provided by this committee in terms of reviewing the material aesthetics to be more consistent with the Oakville vernacular. Um, there were suggestions that, that perhaps beyond the base level, something that would be more similar to the additions that are being taken off. I, I, for example, wood cladding might be more appropriate. There were suggestions about the importance of trying to avoid a cubic aesthetic um, and that the additions with an inappropriate material overwhelm the house and make it look institutional. So um, I would say that the material aesthetics is, is crit absolutely critical. And if we think about the direction that Heritage Oakville gave to 21 Thomas, I really struggle with why that form of direction is, it, which is what I think your intention was with your comments and your direction last time has not been more fully considered by the applicant. And I will say relative to the brick uh, element, which has been mentioned, um, one of the things that I think is important for everybody to understand in terms of our um, um, interpretation of the guidelines is um, we don't agree that brick cladding is an appropriate choice. It's not commonly found throughout this district. Um, when you actually do research on the district and walk around. Brick was not a material that was used extensively in this district, this actual old Oakville Heritage District, primarily because this district reflects the town's beginning. And due to the cost of brick at that time, there were very few brick houses mentioned. Burke was one of them, and think about it. William Chisholm's was the wealthy guy in town. David Patterson on Navy Street that I think Chair Bucknell you referred to, he was a very wealthy person also. So we have a couple of examples of that um, where we do have brick, but it wasn't used uh, extensively. And also the other thing is, is there was a mention in the staff report that perhaps bricks additions have been done in the district. We walked around this entire district and brick additions have been put on brick structures, but not on stucco or clad structures. Sorry, my phone's ringing, I'll, I can mute. Okay, Dave. Thank you. Okay, Jen. Are there any other questions of the delegation? 
Seeing none, Jane, thank you for your delegation. You may be sure that we heard and listened to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't think there are any other delegations on this particular property. Madam Secretary, have you heard from anyone in the meantime? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. So it's up to the committee. So any discussion? Who wants to go first? Councillor Duddett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, similar to the concerns I had at previous meetings, I still am not supportive of this application and will not be voting in favour of it. I don't feel the West Garage is appropriate. Um, you can do something with the driveway, but the garage is the garage and it's the additional driveway is one aspect, but the actual massing of the garage being there is another. Two garages, um, I'm not familiar of any in the uh, district on either side of a home. Usually, if you see anything, it's a coach house or something out back. Um, I do not agree with the cladding that's being proposed. Um, and I would maybe consider uh, supporting something if, in fact, it was the wood cladding. Um, I agree with the comments that Jane shared in regards to the, um, the issue of who used wood, who used uh, stone or brick rather, and uh, Erklis is very, very prominent. And the reason being that it was a very wealthy person who owned it. Um, I just, given the prominence of this property, um, it's just so difficult to support something regardless of the trees, regardless of some of the other aspects that they've cited. I do agree with George. When I went through the plan, it is block by block. It is not a blanket about the whole district. So referring to something over on Trafalgar or referring to something in another area really doesn't have much merit for me. It's the block itself. And uh, so as I say, I'm sorry, I cannot support. Um, and we have decided, this committee, to deny applications, even though staff are supportive of something. So this is not any sort of slight in terms of uh, the staff opinion. I just differ with uh, the fact that I don't think we should be approving it, and I would recommend denial. Okay. Thank you, uh, Kathy. Um, can I just ask, the, um, the cladding material, if we had a garage in the west, could that be the softened brick? But the cladding on the garages to the east, is that where there's a bigger issue and that that cladding would be wood? Is, is that what I'm hearing? My, my whole thing is wood. And I like I said earlier, I have a problem thinking that's modern. Wood to me is not modern. It tends to be older. Um, but. I think by having, you've got the existing siding there and you can see how well it works, okay, with the house. And the other aspect is um, the overpowering. You've got basically bookending this uh, heritage home now with stone and brick. And I, I just think it's wrong, you know. And so, like I say, the, the garage I have an issue with still and I have an issue with the cladding. Hey, thank you for that clarification. Um, anybody else want to speak? George? And then... Thank you, Mr. Anybody else? I finally got the cursor alive here. It's working. <laughs> yeah, it goes to sleep, George. <laughs> that, well, that's something. Uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Kathy. And, uh, and, it, and it is, you know, the plan was put together, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but the plan is put together on a block by block basis by David Nelson and Bo Angevere and some others at town staff at the time. And the implication is, when I, when I asked uh, the applicant about construction materials, it should be visually sympathetic with existing buildings and streetscape. That's that block. Not down at Erkless, not up on William Streets, anywhere else. And yet appropriate given the design of the new structure. And I don't think it qualifies for that. 
if anything, hopefully the, the members of this committee have had an opportunity to read the letters from the, and the delegations because it seems to me that we're back 40 years ago when we, we circulated all the residents of the area to get approval for this district plan and they were all on board. We've got all kinds of delegations letters today and they point out exactly the things. Look at the plan, not your personal belief. Look at the plan. Does it, does, do these plans comply with the, with the district plan? And quite frankly, I, I disagree and I'm, I will deny it as well. Thank you. Hey, George, thank you. Um, Jerry? Being the eternal optimist, I think there's a way, I'm hoping there's a way that we can all um, support moving forward on this because I think we all appreciate the difficulty and the challenge that staff has had and the applicant has had in terms of trying to come to a, an, a mutually acceptable solution. Um, I you know, and I agree with a lot of the comments that have been said, and, and I don't, I, I'm actually, I'm a little perplexed at the, uh, at, at the, uh, shall I say, I don't know how to phrase this diplomatically, but uh, uh, at the um, unwillingness to, to be a little bit more malleable about the material of the cladding. And I understand that, you know, um, artistic license and architectural, um, concepts are important but i think in this case we're looking at something um, beyond and that's the historic elements um, of this very iconic uh, ho home and in an iconic neighborhood so i think there are four points that can make this move forward and the first is um, that the cladding be my preference would be wood number one or number two painted brick not brick to match a color but painted brick to match the painted white color of the house so that the um, it would appear more um, seamless in terms of um, color and thus would help um, envelope the the heritage structure without distracting with the heaviness of the material or the color of a new material the second point being the foundation. Uh, the existing foundation, I would imagine, is lake stone. I can't really see it when I'm walking around, um, but that the stone uh, foundation will be evident even on the brick structure. And that details of that staff would need to look at, but I think we need to notate them in any motion moving forward. The third is, in the discussion of the cubic nature of the aesthetics of the design, uh, what we're missing in these three-dimensional drawings, and it's not to anybody's um, fault, it's just the, the, the nature of the renderings are they're, they're cartoons at this point. They're not realistic pictures. And so details still have yet to be resolved. But we do, we do need to look at the cornice details of of the structure, the one-story structure. And I think once those are resolved, um, we can have a more sympathetic integration of the what, what appears to be cubic structures um, into the heritage existing building, much the same way that Thomas Street um, was done previously. And the fourth item that we would should include in a motion would be the pavers, that they be a greener, softer aesthetic, more park-like. And again, these four elements can be approved uh, by staff. Um, I, I have you know, full confidence that staff um, can approve these given the comments that have been voiced today. So that would be, those would be my comments. Um, if we move to accept this, that it would be accepted with four um, items that would be very specific to the comments that have been raised today. today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jerry. Good input as usual. Anybody else want to, uh, to weigh in at this point? Councillor Gittings and then George. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Jerry, I appreciate your comments and I don't disagree. I believe we heard from the proponent that uh, the painting of the brick um, would be something that they would have considered or, or would consider for this. Uh, I, Mr. Chair, we're running the clock on this. This is going to be uh, before town council uh, in two weeks time, I believe. Um, so I don't know whether we're going to have time to uh, get to yes at this committee this morning based on uh, based on the comments I've heard so far. So I'd appreciate uh, feedback uh, from my uh, committee colleagues in terms of the painted brick, if that's something that they feel would, uh, would get us there. While, uh, while it's different, it would be honoring the integrity of the original home. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, George. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, apropos painted brick, uh, this this committee decided a number of years ago uh, over in First and Second Street, painted brick was not appropriate in any heritage conservation district. Uh, secondly, I mean, the time time is being spent on talking about driveways. I mean, when you walk down the street or you look at, you're not looking at the driveway. You're looking at the building and the accompanying outbuildings, if you will. So. The addressing by saying we're going to put in a permeable driveway is, I think, is is non, it's non-starter as far as I'm concerned. Therefore, you're looking at, you're still looking at the book, the book ends, and renderings are, renderings are great, but in my experience, renderings do not reflect, and I, I think Jerry alluded to this, do not reflect the actual outcome of the buildings. They're, they're helpful, but I think you shouldn't look at them in, uh, with, with more than an idea of, well, Perhaps this will give you an idea of what it looks like. So I'm uh, sorry. I'm still uh, I'm still opposed to this uh, application. Thank you. Hey, George. Brenda. So through you, Mr. Chair, uh, I think I'm going to have to take a contrarian view here. In that, um, if I look at the final, de if I look at what's been said, I believe that one of the goals in this process is to ensure that the heritage building becomes visually prominent. If everything in the building is made white, as it is now, then there is no visual prominence to the heritage building. So I believe that, according to what is stated, we should be encouraging differentiation in the new build. So I do not have a problem with a, a material that is distinctive, and provided that it does ensure that the heritage building is visually prominent. With the setbacks that we've requested, with the changes to adding greenery on the east side, the tree, the landscaping down the side, on the west side, uh, if those are honored and if we uh, can perhaps add something regarding the landscaping to ensure that happens to soften, I do not have a problem if it is proposed, particularly with the new brick that is a lighter color, that is softer, and I believe would enhance the, uh, the property as shown. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Robert? Russ? Uh, I would support Brenda's comments on this. And just one other practical concern, Mike. I have a concern that if we don't do something soon, this owner will pack it up and this d property could just remain derelict, which wouldn't do anybody any good. So uh, I think from a practical point of view, we need to get on with it. And I think Brenda's comments are well taken. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sue, I can see your hand. Yeah, I'm more in, in uh, Brenda's uh, corral here. I, I think a white uh, is a real problem. It's just going to, that whole house is going to disappear. Uh, as it stands now, the house is lovely. It's set apart. The book ending is a, maybe a little bit of an issue with that second garage. Um, I, I don't, I, I, I'm really quite happy with it. I do believe that the presentation of the project as it is does actually tick the boxes in the heritage plan uh, as presented by the staff. Um, 
I, I understand that there's a lot of worry among the neighbors. Um, I don't, as I say, I think most of the letters were commenting that they didn't feel that the presentation of the project ticked the correct boxes in the heritage plan, but I think they do. Um, and I think there's so many things that are working very well here. I think the real sticking point is probably that second garage more than anything else for me. Thanks. Thank you. I think we've, everybody's had a kick at the can. And you know, I'm, as, as chair, it's not my job to tell you what to do, it merely to make sure that the process works and that everybody has the opportunity to share and that we're very clear on what we're trying to do. And um, I'm really, really pleased to, just to hear what everybody's had to say because you've kept on point. There are three things, only three things. Everything else is noise. And we are the people to make the decision. We've had great input for and against. Against has been more active in the sense that they've taken the time to, to come and delegate to us. The four have been like emails. I'm sure you've all got emails saying, we think this is a great idea and so on. That's good too, but that's noise. It's just us. We are the people here who need to make the recommendation to council based on what we read in the plans and we've had some really good input on that. This is what the plan says, and this is what it doesn't say. And based on the professional advice that we get from our heritage planning staff and all the other levels of planning that go on, and the site plan people and the conservation people and the committee of adjustment, everybody's had a piece of this pie and we're right down now to the end. This is, this is the last step. Um, I'm hearing that there is a sense from some of you that the staff recommendation, perhaps with the addition with respect to the papers, and you know, I, re I do think that does make a difference. I mean, when you look at the worn doorstep, I mean, yes, they have a garage on one side and a driveway on the other, but it's a dirt driveway on the on the on the west side, which I think looks a lot less intrusive than a than a tarmac a driveway ever would there. But that that's that's personal. But I think the papers are a town initiative, and that's something we should support. So to get the thing moving, would somebody, Brenda, you spoke eloquently on that, or Sue, you spoke eloquently on that. Would somebody give me a motion that is the staff recommendation with the reference to the pavers? And it leaves the brick as is. I'm making that clear so everybody knows what, what they're hearing. Um, Jerry, I, I, okay, if, if you go. I uh, just wanted to add, um, Mr. Chair, that the motion include um, finishing details so that it could incorporate cornice detailing. Yes. As well as cladding. Yes, and it could paver do. So and paver cornice details. Cornice and yeah. paper. I'm just trying to yeah. keep this moving in step of process because we're, we're doing well. And I just wish we had more opportunity to, to but we haven't, we've got a clock. Um, so, it did Sue, did you support that motion? Are you prepared to make that motion? Or Brenda, did you want to do it? Whichever one? Or Jerry? No, I'm, I'm fine uh, doing it. I, I would, I, it's just a case of how you want to word it, and I'll leave that to your expertise. Um, to support the staff recommendation with uh, the, a couple of the uh, provisos that Jerry was providing. Uh, namely that the, the, the usual, the cladding, the windows, the doors, et cetera, do come back to the staff yeah. for the finalized and um, the issue around, I suppose, the driveways to make them. The, the paving and the cornices. Okay. So, so I think you can incorporate that. Yeah. In, in, uh, Through you, Mr. In Chair. clear fashion. That would yes, great. yes, and I'm sure Carolyn's got that. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, if this is helpful, um, it could be that in the first clause A, that final details on new windows, doors, cladding, cornice, and driveway materials be submitted to Heritage Planning staff for final approval. Is that sufficient? Then the driveway materials have to be green. Okay, and driveway materials that incorporate um, grass or, or, or well, uh, the, the town be... has an initiative that has got a name for it. I'm not sure what it is. Is it permeable driveways? Permeable, yeah. Permeable. Okay. And permeable driveway materials. 
So I'll read that again for the clerk, um, for the committee, that final details on new windows, doors, cladding, cornice, and permeable driveway materials be submitted to Heritage Planning staff for final approval. Yeah. Okay. Kathy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will not be supporting the motion. Um, and given the fact that we have opposing views from staff, I even have concerns with final approval coming back to staff because it's basically going to be what staff want to see right now. And so, as I say, I think we need to deny the application. Um, I'm not concerned about a clock. Uh, making good decisions, we shouldn't be thinking in terms of a clock. If anything, that would be the applicant's problem, that they still have not addressed the things that we made clear at the very onset of this process. So, as I say, I strongly recommend denial. Okay, good. Thank you, Kathy. So, we, we have a motion on the floor. Sure. And George, I'll just get to you, and Dave, just, just in a second. So we have the motion on the floor, and everybody understands what that motion is. And um, so that's that's what we're discussing. And I wasn't meaning clock we have to rush. I'm just saying we have to deal with this today. We have to do something with it today. Um, it doesn't mean it couldn't come back later. I mean, if even if it were a denial, it could you can reapply tomorrow. Um, but that, that was my only reference to, to clock, uh, Kathy. Uh, George, I think you wanted to get in, and I think Dave. Thank you. I'm glad you clarified that point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, but I, again, want to emphasize my complete uh, uh, agreement with Kathy on, on a denial. It, it doesn't meet the it doesn't meet the standards of the plan it, as, as the plan was devi designed. Uh, it's, it's fine for people to say, well, you know, it's a nice design. It has nothing to do with complying with the plan. And, and this will set a dangerous precedent, quite frankly. There are other applications coming up, as you and I know. So I agree with Kathy, and uh, it's up to the applicant to, if this is denied, and, and I intend to vote again for denial. That's up to the applicant. Thank you. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, Dave? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not able to support uh, this motion as it pertains to the brick. I, I would be comfortable with uh, what may well be the next motion. The in terms of the in terms of the clock, my preference is to have this committee make recommendations, and ultimately it will go to council. So it would be nice if this committee could come together, counting counting the heads in the comments. I'm not sure whether that's going to be possible or not, but that's always uh, what we strive for. And in terms of uh, in terms of the garage, uh, further to your earlier comments, Mr. Chair, those decisions have been made at the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, that's not before us. And so I just wanted to remind us of that. And with that, I look forward to see where we're going here. That's sort of why it's a cliffhanger. Um, yeah, the garage was dealt with elsewhere and the trees were dealt with. There are a lot of things were dealt with through this process. And this is this is a progressive process. We don't go, you know, three steps forward and four steps back. I mean, that's fair to nobody. Uh, and, I th and I sense in the discussion that we are in fact visiting the issues that have been of concern consistently for us. We're, we haven't introduced, there's no red herrings in here. This, this is pretty clear and straightforward. So we have a motion, George. Yeah? Sure, just, just a quick one. Am I, am I to take to understand that the understanding is that the committee of adjustment can override anything that has to go that the committee that the uh, heritage district plan sets out. I don't understand that. I thought the plan took precedence. Since when does the committee of adjustment decide this can happen and this can happen and this can happen? So I just want some clarification on that. Maybe maybe this isn't the point for it, but I'm just concerned about that. I think that what I was meaning, George, that they had given their approval to it, and that there's no heritage reason for not going along with that, and heritage did not make that reason clear at that time. Yeah. Uh, because if we said absolutely no to a garage at the site planning process, then you can be sure it wouldn't have appeared, and and, and we didn't. We. I mean, some people feel we should have, but we didn't. So I just don't like going back on 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 progress. I think people should feel Thank that you. once they've got something, they've got it. Um, so we've got 
we've got a we've got a motion on the floor, and the motion is to go with the staff recommendation. It includes we've seen it. There's there's a choice of materials, the softer brick. The coloring of that is still up for a little bit of of, of discussion to keep it to keep it appropriate um, with the cornice detail and the paving detail. Now we've and, and Madam Clark, you can keep me on guide here. I think we're down to nine. Is that right, Jill? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So when I call the question, sorry, Jerry. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to take, can I take one last stab at this? Because I'd really like to see a unified committee uh, on this one. Just for all, all our sakes and moving forward for, you know, future applications. Um, would would we get um, close to unanimous approval if the cladding were wood siding? I see a nod from Councillor Duddick. I see a nod from Councillor Giddings. George? No. So if we went with wood cladding and allowed the applicant to carry the stone foundation through and do whatever they like with the stone foundation beyond this the front facades like the side and the back could we get a close to unanimous approval because i think that's what we've been asking all along brenda and brenda's shaking her head no and i just wanted to reassure brenda that texture separates architectural elements so they won't blend in unanimously. I just, I just want to clarify, you're, you're assuming that the siding, wood siding is going to be mounted horizontally. Wood siding is not always mounted horizontally. It's often and frequently mounted vertically. So if you prescribe, we, it, you prescribe it, you may not, you may backfire on you and you may get totally something that as Terry Martino outlined earlier, will be highly contemporary. So well, I have to be careful about what we're prescribing with the intent. So wood siding is not necessarily going to be be all and end all to save things. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, we could stipulate the horizontal wood siding. And again, the final details are up to staff for approval, which means the details of the cornice, the foundations, etc. I'm just trying to get us to a point where we can get a consensus of the of the committee hearing what um, um, delegates have had to say and it seems to me from what i'm hearing that the cladding seems to be the major issue that is stalling this and if the plot applicant truly wants to move forward addressing the cladding they've heard time and again that wood siding seems to be an acceptable alternative to move forward so if there's an intention to move forward why aren't we going with wood cladding Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Julie, and I appreciate where you were coming from on that, you know, to try and get consensus. It's taking me to a place that we're, 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 we're kind of over designing on the fly. Um, you know, we're, we're introducing too much of a change. Um, and I've, I've lived in this committee umpteen years ago where we were damn near doing the drawings on the table and handing them to the architect. So and I didn't want to go there. George, did you want to say something? Well, just a quick one, Mr. Chairman, as, as proposed, the, uh, the wood, at least the uh, stone foundation that uh, uh, that uh, Jerry was talking about, they still got all the stone work on the west side that uh, adjacent to the park. And you can see all the delegates right into that saying they're, what they're going to look at is a stone wall. It looks like a, an industrial complex in the back with this high stone wall and along the side. No, no mention has been made of that either. So I just... Because it's still there. Okay, Bob. Yes, I, I'm in agreement with George and, and, and Kathy. I won't be supporting this, uh, you know, and also raising the question mark, uh, even with through the Committee of Adjustment, this bookended approach to the property, I think it makes a significant change. So. On, on all of the things that are brought forward. I think George makes all good sense. So I'll be, I won't be supporting it. Okay. So 
way we have to proceed is we've got a motion on the floor, we'll see where it goes and we'll see what happens after that. So the motion on the floor is that we approve it. It's got brick, there's adjustments to the, the paving and to the cornice detail. So that's the motion on the floor. We have nine people. So I need to ask who is opposed to that motion and if you would hold your hands up so that we can get you counted. I'm counting, I'm seeing one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's not enough. Um, so that means that the motion carries and that the application recommendation to council is that they uh, give a permit to this um, application. Now I'm sure this will play out again at council um, and I understand that. I mean, that's the process, that's fair. But I'm listening to you and you've all had your, your 10 cents worth and it's a pity we were missing a, a couple of other members that would have made it a little bit clearer one way or the other perhaps. Um, so good, that's it. Thank you very much. That's the end of that agenda item. And we'll go Thank on. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Terry. Um, Thank so, you. yes, you, 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 you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Everyone have a great day. Right. Thank you. Um, now, we have another item that's 4.2. And um, I think it's Carolyn that's making this. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm not sure how to give you any guidance on this one. I don't really know where it came from. Um, it looks like the delegated heritage permit process, which I thought we had in place. Uh, Kathy, are you going to help me on this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, this is one that um, I thought it was very important that it come back to committee. And the reason being, um, we had approved a um, installation of a railing on top of the addition that we were quite concerned about. And it was done intentionally. Um, when I ended up with staff, because I didn't see it being built, and I understand the property is either being sold or has been sold. Um, staff were not aware that it hadn't been installed as well. So I had a concern in regards to um, how we follow up on um, permits to make sure that what we approve actually gets done in the field. Uh, then when they met with the individual or their representatives, I understand a decision was made by staff um to not install the railing and given the discussions we had at committee um i just for my own well-being i guess wanted to have the committee have an opportunity to discuss it and to confirm whether or not um we how the, our process works in terms of what we give staff approval for um, I have a hard time explaining to people in the area who say, why wasn't it installed, given that it was approved by the committee, and then afterwards finding out that it was approved um, to not have it installed. Um, in a way, it sort of is rewarding bad behavior in my eyes. Somebody who's not following through with something can turn around and say, I, I didn't really want to do it anyway, so I'm not going to do it. They never notified our staff they weren't going to do it. So it, it gave me concern um, in terms of um, this committee answering public concerns regarding you approve something, why wasn't it installed? So that's why I asked to have an opportunity to have it um, brought as a discussion item. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for your work in regards to that, because normally it's just shared as an information item and we don't have an opportunity to discuss it. So I thought it was important that we as a committee discuss this situation and whether or not we are maybe wanting to revisit what is approved by staff when it's been approved at committee. Okay, so that's where. Yeah, I hear that, Kathy. I just it, the discomfort that I have is that we have a delegation bylaw in process, the staff is there, we get reports back, they've been, I'm 
probably 400 odd of those uh, 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 variances, if you like, have been have been granted by staff for a myriad items that 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 come up. And um, um, if 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 the if there's a concern about one in particular, um, then usually what we do is afterwards, you know, the, the the committee member talks to staff and express it or inquires about it and if there's a concern it would perhaps come back to us to discuss the application of the whole thing but um if, that's if, what if i you're, was doing you're yes you're, you're looking at this one and out of the three or four hundred and you're saying that this one perhaps is a delegation too far this this is this this somehow or other if it is and i would trust the staff i think not just Heritage planning level, but director level. This is a director uh, issued uh, thing that um, that they would be interpreting it correctly. In which case, the bylaw needs to be clarified. That's my so point. that a different interpretation would have been arrived at. Okay, because we can't turn back the clock. We can't. We can't go back now to somebody else and say, "Put that balustrade back up again." So I know that's not what you're taking. As no, getting, no, it was not my it. intention, Drew. My, my intention was to get a temperature around the table whether or not, given this example, we are still wanting to go with the existing bylaw in delegating to the director of planning staff. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, again, you know, I have lots of issues uh, around taking one item, but sometimes that's the that's the canary in the coal mine, um, where you think something's happened and you want to examine it more closely. Councillor Gittings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one of the concerns I saw in the report was, uh, I believe Councillor Duddock raised it earlier, what uh, follow-up is done to ensure that uh, some of these items are completed? If it's not under the uh, the Ontario Building Code, like if it's not something that our inspectors check, such as you know, plumbing or electrical, how do we ensure that uh, items that this committee may have requested uh, get signed off on? I'll let Carolyn answer that in a minute, but I can tell you uh, that staff follow these things up. And if it wasn't for one member of staff being pulled off to handle all kinds of other legal uh, issues that the town was encountering at the time and another one going on maternity leave and COVID-19 coming in, perhaps we would have caught this. So if you want to staff the place adequately, you'll get lots of inspection. Um, Carolyn, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think this is um, a bit of an odd one in that the person who was a staff member who was originally dealing with this application was on contract and is no longer dealing with applications. Um, we did have, you know, mat leave, not everyone around. Um, and then we are, our inspections are a little bit behind, as are the building inspections just due to COVID-19 um, in terms of availability and being able to actually, um, you know, with all the stay at home orders, being able to leave and actually do some of this work. So um, it was, you know, done uh, and, you know, we did follow up with the minor heritage permit um, for that process. But as you noted, there are often um, changes that happen during construction. And typically I would note that owners or contractors or architects do contact us while the change is being decided or, or proposed. Um, and then we're able to go out and site with them at that time. Uh, it just wasn't the case in this scenario. Okay. Um, has it, everybody's read the, the, the material that, that, that Carolyn distributed and you know what the issue is. And I know that Jane, Jane, in fact, sent us some stuff. I don't know whether she's going to, to speak with us this morning again as a delegate, she might. Um, but I think we know we know what the issue is. So how did how did others feel about the application of this particular authority? Did anybody did it raise a concern with anybody? It didn't. It didn't. In, in, interesting. It didn't. Um, I, Possibly my yeah, probably my memory of it is that there were eight, there were nine items or eight items, and this they, they, they complied with them all, and this was one other that came up through a construction process. And I have a bit of sympathy. I know it's a flat roof, and you start to put wooden lips around it, the water doesn't run off anymore. I know you can put all kinds of flashing and stuff, but all you're doing is creating problems for yourself later. Um, so I kind of looked at it that way, I guess. But that that was just me. Um, 
So I would only, we only need to receive this report. But I think Kathy raises an issue that uh, perhaps um, in our job jar, because we've got three or 400 of these that have been handled uh, by staff um, over the last uh, couple of three years or whatever, num whatever period of time it is. And we do have a look at it ourselves. Maybe it's time and we can't do that. Council would have to do that. That staff should take some time to, to just to have a look at with well, us another pair of eyes and there's there's new people now in fact in the planning department i mean gabe you're you're, you're new to this here and you might look at it and say you know i don't quite see how that would have, how could we clarify the wording in the bylaw to make sure that the intent um is is being met because i'll tell you something this delegation bylaw is is the jewel in the crown for this committee because i've sat through meetings people used to have to come to the committee through the process because they wanted to repaint their house and people would argue for half an hour about what color of green was appropriate and harry and i were on the point of taking off and we said there has to be a better way to deal with this because that's a waste of our time mm -hmm. the second thing is that when a, a project is underway things will happen and you don't want to throw a two-month delay into the middle of a project while somebody gets approval for a different door handle I mean, that, that, that is not the way to do it. So the delegate, and I know you're not trying to say to repeal the delegation bylaw, Kathy, but what I'm saying is it's a great thing, but maybe it's not inappropriate for us to step back and have a look at it. If staff could have a look at it and, and, and do themselves some, some testing, any of them that look a little bit to the edge, maybe looking at this one and hearing the input from it. And so anyway, Kathy, off you go. Um, I guess the other thing is, and again, that would be dealt with at uh, the council table is whether or not um, to assist staff in closing the loop on completed applications. I know we take securities for various things. Is there something whereby they have to submit a form and check off that they've done the things that were required that were passed at committee and provide the pictures or details so that you can have something on file to close it off um, versus as drew mentioned having yet another staff person going around and doing inspections the majority of the things are caught under the building code and through other processes through the town's uh, departments but in this case i guess what concerned me is that staff weren't even aware of it and so to protect staff to be able to say yes they submitted a form and they submitted and checked off all the boxes that were required for the approval um, and that's maybe something we have at the council table to discuss um, but again i completely agree with what uh, drew has mentioned about the um the bylaw we currently have has worked extremely well and I do recall the painting and the color of this and that it was ridiculous um, but I guess I just want to get some sense from the rest of the committee um, when you see one of these situations where some of the wheels came off is there something we can do better in terms of our process so Kathy but I didn't hear any member of the committee saying that they they, they found that that decision was out of bounds, but maybe that maybe somebody else does want to. Dave and then George. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to let you know I, I received a note from uh, Ms. Hawkrig. She is standing by. Uh, uh, she did desire to delegate on this. <laughs> just wonder if the clerk can let us know whether she's still on the line there. Mr. Chairman, Jane yep, yep, Hawkrig yep. is still in the meeting, but will be brought in at the appropriate time when the delegation okay, is called. Thank you. So, so the fact that I'm not seeing her name doesn't mean to say she's not she's not still here. So that's okay. Thanks. Thanks, John. George. Well, I just wanted to confirm that when you indicated earlier that does anybody have any concerns or any interest, just to let you know I do, and I agree with what Cassie's saying. Just that's all. Okay. 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 Jerry? 
I think Mr. Chair uh, Neil had his hand up uh, before me. I'll, I'll let. Uh... Neil, you've got your hand up. There we go. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have been looking, listening to, uh, to the conversation, and I think that there's a couple of things that staff can take away. We can certainly look at the the means by which we communicate changes with uh, with this committee. I think that's really important. And so, as someone coming in with a fresh set of eyes, I think that that is something that we can look at how we can communicate those changes a little differently and perhaps uh, uh, elevate our communication. Um, the second thing is, as Councillor Dudek had said, we can look at the securities that we take and other means of making sure that uh, the completion, the inspection function is working as uh, the committee desires and as uh, Council expects. So those are two things that we can as staff take away and we'll do that with, uh, without direction. Uh, but if, if this committee chooses to, I'd be, I'd be, uh, I would welcome that direction as well. But we will undertake those two, those two items. And if there's anything else that, that the, this committee uh, that thinks would enhance and improve the delegation process, uh, then, then we'll certainly look at that as well. Thank you, Neil. That, that's that's very helpful. Um, okay, Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I recall that at one time we had an inspector from the building inspection department that was dedicated to heritage uh, permits that then would report back to heritage staff. Um, and that was, I guess, eased out. So maybe some consideration to getting staff from the building inspection permit department reporting back to our heritage staff. That would be my one comment. The second would be, I think the securities that uh, Councillor Duddick brought up is an excellent idea with a checklist and uh, you know a small deposit um, that would you know guarantee or at least help to guarantee that some of the work is done if it meant that the applicant you know could access their money back by following the the you know the intention of the building permit. Excellent idea, Councillor Duddick. Thank you. We'd always been taught that we didn't really have the power, like a building inspector can go in and stop work. Uh, a heritage planner can't go in and say, you can't do that. You have to hope that there's some building inspection infraction so that the building department can come in and stop the work. So I don't think we can do that, but maybe if we can get some kind of surety that uh, the individual will comply with the detail of the permit that they've been given, um, then that that would be an interesting avenue uh, to explore. So this this is good. I mean, we'll, we'll hear from Jane in a minute, but um, th this is good because this has been going on for a while, and this is the first time. The first time. So I have immense confidence in the way that the staff has been doing this. This is the first time this has popped up, and and it's come at an awkward time where difficult things were happening, and and. And I may not disagree with the decision they actually made, but what I'm saying is it's the first time that this has come up. But it probably is, just with the passage of time, uh, not a bad thing to just have another look. And with some new players in, 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 in the game, um, we might come up with some even better ideas because the intent of this whole thing was to get detail away. And we are client focused like somebody having to go through a whole application process to paint the door is, is ludicrous. Somebody who encounters some difficulty during the construction process that has a heritage impact and not a building code impact, who needs to do it differently, shouldn't have to go through a two month process and bring work to a stop while they do that. So the, the principles behind it are great and we don't want to lose any of them. Uh, but if we could improve the process, I'm all for that. And if, if staff can just take that away, having heard, you know, the input here um, and come back to us at some point, it'll be in the job jar, maybe the end of the year is, is, is a fair time to, to say we might like to hear from you again, because any change in that bylaw would have to be recommended by us to council and then council would have to deal with it um, as it does. 
So um, if I could just pause us now for a moment and ask Jane um, if, uh, if, if she wants to join us. Um, Joel, can you make that happen? Hello again, Jane. Hi, Drew. <laughs> You've been listening, I hope. <laughs> yes, thanks, Chairman Bucknell. I was, I, and I apologize. I didn't know how the process was working when you're receiving a report and there's a delegation. So, um, thank you for um, uh, hearing me. Um, I did do a submission on this to you, yep. and I'm planning on on reading it. I'm very happy to hear about the the process um, discussion that's taken place at the committee level. Um, I think it's really important for us um, as a community to have confidence that um, you're holding the owners of um, heritage properties who've gone for for a heritage permit to account um, to those to the to the permit that's been issued, and I think that that's very important. So elevating the communication, yes, um, the security thing, I think um, actually could have worked in this this specific situation, and I'd encourage that completely. Um, and the delegation process. The only issue that I was re raising on the delegation um, point was is that when when this came back in February for approval, um, the way the the report was written is that the delegation of authority at the time was subject to final details on windows and doors. So, um, you know, my sense is is you know what what. What staff ended up allowing the owner not to do because the owner decided they didn't want to do it was the open wood railing. And when that um, that open wood railing all along the, the flat story was was mentioned in the report as being complementary to the railing on the open porch portico for the key building immediately to the north. So my question had been from a delegated authority perspective and our review of the bylaw. I thought it was intended for minor changes. Definitely, you know, I think it's appropriate to do that, but that, that are separate and distinct from what I would have viewed as an integrated design design decision by the committee. So maybe it's um, wrong interpretation, but that's just the only other element that I was going to raise um, for discussion at the committee. But that that's all I have to say. Thank you, Jane, for that. And and yes, it, the thing is that what we delegate to staff in the in the approval process is like the final details, like what color are doorknobs and what color are paint. Um, everything else is in the drawing. So the balustrade in this particular one would have been in the drawings and the heritage permit would have included that. So staff weren't making any decision about that at that point. It was later when issues arose and staff exercised their authority under the delegation bylaw to permit that not to happen. That's the issue here. And, and the issue here is uh, some people feel that was maybe more than should have been allowed. Well, that would be a matter of interpretation of the bylaw. The bylaw would need to be clarified. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think the process that we're, 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 we're suggesting today would, would achieve that end. And nothing, nothing can be improved. Um, so what we've got is good and it's been working well and uh, if we can if we can make improvements to it that help the staff so that staff know what it is is expected of them i mean don't hang them out to dry because they made a decision and nobody's trying to do that um, but i'm just saying you want to protect against that and the way to do that is to clarify your directions so okay carolyn did you want to add to that Yes, Mr. Chair, just for clarity, because I think there has been some confusion about this. Uh, in the delegation bylaw, there is a clause uh, that minor changes to previously approved permits um, can be delegated to staff. So it's not just that minor changes to a home, um, you know, the first time are approved uh, through staff, but also that minor revisions to a previously approved heritage permit through the Heritage Oakville and Council process can also be delegated to staff, just if that helps. Yep, and a key part of it, um, we didn't want to um, make the public feel that the decisions were all being made at staff level. Staff can't deny. Right? Staff cannot deny anything. Uh, that can only be done committee and council. So if staff give you the okay, that's fine. If staff say we're not comfortable with that, there's the new route, the new avenue you have to follow. So so that's already in there too. Um, so I, I think if we just simply did what we were asked to do this time, which is to receive the report 
and just leave it there. Where you know, I have a feeling I would. I think we've said it. The staff have done a great job on this, a super job, uh, Kathy. Thank you. I I concur one hundred percent. Maybe just having heard around the table, uh, Councillor Giddings and I can uh, maybe meet with Neil or whatever and discuss how we revise some things in terms of the process. But I do agree wholeheartedly staff have done a great job in dealing with some of the minor things that we wanted to have delegated to them. Yeah. Um, so this was not a reflection on our staff not doing something. It was just I wanted to make sure our processes protect both staff and the people who make the decision making. So I will move receipt of the report. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we've got we're just going to receive the report and that 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 is the motion that Kathy has made. But, but I think this this has been good discussion again. Um, as I say, I think the staff have done a super job and it's such an important element of our process. And you know something? <sighs> We get a bad rap as heritage, and, and sometimes Jane might suggest it's because we approve things that we ought not to. But you know, the other side of the coin is that a lot of people want to do stuff, and they see us as an obstacle. Uh, they see heritage as an obstacle, and that's not good. That's not good. So, having a little bit of a client focus to make the application process easier, the consultation process that goes on, the to and fro and back and forward before it even gets to the committee and council, and this delegation thing. I can't emphasize how dreary meetings were when you were arguing about the size of the door handle or the color of the wood. I mean, it just, it would amaze you. Um, and uh, that we don't have to do that anymore, and that's good. So the motion is that we receive the report. Uh, do I see anyone opposed to that motion? No, I don't. And thank you, Jane, again for your delegation. Um, I kind of rolled past you there, but um, I, th I think we're all in agreement that we're we're on. A, we've got a good project. It's in the job jar, and it'll come out at the appropriate time. So thank you, everybody, for that. Um, there aren't, there's a 4.3 and that's 78 Allen Street. And I think it was Sue that was doing that. No, it's me again, Chair. Oh, you again? Well, because I saw Sue had appeared and I thought maybe she's going to do it. But anyway, good, good. Um, I could give a, a brief presentation, but it's essentially the um, earlier this year, the Heritage Committee asked um, to for us to bring back the draft designation bylaw for 78 Allen Street. Again, this is an amendment to an existing designation bylaw. So the Heritage Committee already saw the notice of intention to amend the bylaw earlier this year. It went to council. We received no appeals. Um, we were working with the owner, so this is just the final um, version that we would like to bring back uh, to council um, this next month and for final approval. And if there's any concerns or questions, um, now would be the time to raise them. Otherwise, we'll continue forward with the process. Good, thank you. And I think we all got the chance to see that. Uh, Councillor Giddings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, happy to see this come back, and I agree fully with it. And I'd be happy to give you a motion for approval on that. Before I do that, Mr. Chair, um, I remember I went back through my notes uh, back three years ago when we went through this application. And many of the questions at the time, contemporary and, and, and so on, were uh, voiced at that time as they, as they often are. And Councillor Duddick and I have had a number of rich conversations in terms of uh, based on the comments we've heard, uh, particularly on Front Street lately, uh, talking about the district plan and what is contained in it compared to the uh, Ontario Heritage Act versus, uh, uh, versus the heritage permit kit that has gone through uh, uh, with proponents when they come forward. And I think it'd be great if we all had the uh, same hymn book. And so you mentioned the job jar earlier. Uh, we'd like to spend some more time on that at the appropriate time at an upcoming meeting or as an ad hoc committee so that we can uh, bring clarity to the process. And I think that would uh, as well. Yeah, I think, and in fact, it might be quite timely as the province not 
redesigning the toolkit. I mean, it's, it's made changes to the act and some of the hazards yes. like that yeah. I was exposed to now with LPAT and stuff. Um, that I think they may be doing that. And wouldn't that be lovely if that was a face-to-face -face time and we could all get some sticky buns and some coffee and we could actually go through a good a good orientation session? I think that I think it would be a fascinating conversation yeah. because there's uh, people are passionate. You know, we saw that about Front Street. Uh, people care and they're passionate, and we're all trying to get to the same thing. We just have different. Uh, different understandings at times yeah and uh, if we could uh anyway I'll, I'll leave it at that mr chair thanks and i think the district plan is probably in your job job too i mean you did one 40 years plan. yeah and so it's about time that that was being done but you need to get to lighten the workload of the folks you've already got on staff before you undertake that 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 project anyway um it probably needs doing though it, it certainly needs doing um, it is, it's fallen way behind uh, the modern interpretations okay so the motion is that we uh, receive that uh, report anyone opposed to that no one so that motion is carried there are no other information items our next meeting is july the 20th and it says here off film municipal building and i was thinking my goodness they're gonna have us back and then it says underneath virtual meeting 9 30 a.m so we will be virtually in the town hall in july but speaking as a second shotter i got my second shot yesterday and got the same little ache that i'd had in the arm the first time so far everything's okay <laughs> nothing else has fallen off and i'm hoping in a couple of weeks to be uh, fireproof so i hope you're all doing what you need to do to get your second shots if you haven't already done it, because it seems that there's plenty of availability now. So if I could just thank everybody again for the gift of your time today and for the hard work that you put in. It wasn't an easy meeting. And uh, it's, as I say, it's not over till it's over. So it's, uh, <laughs> um, that's great. And I think if they're still listening, all the people who delegated today and who, who participated in the process, that, that was good that they did that. So a motion to adjourn, which has come from, come from Bob, right. Bob has moved that we adjourn and we are therefore adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.